Hey okay, guys, it's Julesy, and it's a bit of a different background because the sun is setting at like 5.15 and we're not functioning. So I'm trying to be able to record at different times of day, even when the sun is low. So let me know in the comments down below if you like this aesthetic. If you follow me on Snapchat, you know I was having a bit of an ordeal with this bookshelf. However, uh, one day it'll eventually be color coordinated once my sister does it for me. So let's get into this review of The Hate You Gave. And if you're new here, be sure to comment along, engage. It's always about a critical thought, a critical dialogue, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you like it, love it, or you know, you're not really here for it at all. As long as you give it respect, but we're here for it. And subscribe, turn on your bell for notification, thumbs up the video because all that kind of stuff helps. You know, we're trying to grow. We're trying to grow here. So The Hate You Give is based on a young adult book by the same title by Angie Thomas. Now, I purposefully picked up the book to read before I went to see the movie because I had heard some rumblings about the casting and I wasn't really planning to see the movie initially but <laughs> I'm never one to be left out of conversation now so hey. So The Hate You Give was actually a good book. Not really my cup of tea precisely in writing style and that's really just because I'm old and the book is very aptly written for teenagers. It would be like rereading The Coldest Winter Ever and realizing how basic some of the things I thought were so fascinating and deep. <laughs> really are or were, you know? It's up here, it's on the... Oh, Dad, you can't even stand Frank. It's further up. That's kind of where I was at with The Hate You Get, which I definitely think is worth the read. And if you have teenagers, I mean, read it with them. It's a good, like, you know, I'm all about family engagement. Read it with your cousins, your nephew, your daughter, your son. <laughs> read it with everybody. Per reading the book, I felt like the main character, Star, was a riff on Rachel Jean Tall, John Teal, the young lady friend who was the last person to speak to Trayvon Martin before he was murdered. Now, Rachel was humiliated by the prosecutors as they were condescending and talked down to her. Then she was belittled by mainstream media and her image was ridiculed when broadcasted on the news. Now, we do not love all black women. This is exactly what I was talking about when I said focus on learning to love black women in that video about them white women's y'all trying to make popular because they black fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is exactly what I was talking about when I say focus on learning to love black women and don't be worried about the I got a black grandmother girls quabbling over whether they are black or not, which is why the casting of Star should have been all the more important. The character of Star has more affluence and access than Rachel, but the parallels are so obviously there with Star being the only witness of her friend Khalil being murdered by a cop after a traffic stop. And the way Star is written about both in the care she gives to code switching between the hood she lives in and her private school to the way she encounters the media attention is explicit the experience of an identifiably black woman who does not fit easily into the guidelines of mainstream beauty ideals. <laughs> this should have been more carefully considered in the casting of the movie, which overall to say the casting of the movie is just not good. So let me get to the point. The book is far, far, far better and it offers so much material that I do not understand what happened in the writing room. Uh oh. <laughs> Guess I should have known. The movie is just poorly written. The character arcs are off and some are so close to stereotypical that they read as cartoonish. The casting of biracial Amanda Steinberg. Ugh, it's just wrong on so many levels. And I don't have an issue with Amanda being mixed, so we can all chill with the black people aren't mixed comments. <laughs> That's not what we're getting at here. But no light-skinned actress should have been casted as Star. Someone like myself would not have been appropriate playing Star. Star needed to be identifiably black, no question about her heritage, brown skin, dark skin, black girl, period. And then Common, ripping any sort of nuance in Andy Thomas carefully crafted into the character of Uncle Carlos to Anthony Mackie not having an OG gangsta bone in his body, especially for a character who is described more like a shook knight in the book. And here we end up with Anthony Mackie. And uh, this pains me. It pains me. It pains me so deeply to say, but sis, Issa Rae has one tone that she elevates the volume on and it does not work with her playing the civil rights activist lawyer, Ms. Oprah. Like it's not good. Like I cringed. Like. Now Regina Hall and Russell Hornsby playing Star's parents were decent and her siblings were fine. But dear lord, the way they handled Seven's mama was just an unintentional comedy unto itself that was entirely unnecessary and low-key disrespectful. Like, come on, sis. That's not, that's not it. Angie Thomas wrote a book that was meant to connect with young black teenagers. There's a lot of dialogue, juxtaposition, and descriptors that are meant to invoke the authentic experience of a black teenage girl through a tumultuous Black Lives Matter scenario. And none of that except maybe the Jordan's 
sneakers made it into the movie. And I don't understand why. You like, you just can't convince me that that white boy, that white boy with his non-lip half itself had stars swooning over him. Like sis, that's, mm -mm. no, that wasn't it either. He just didn't have the black girls like me, Jenna Saqua. You know what I'm talking about? Like he didn't have, it wasn't, Swag wasn't there. It wasn't on. It wasn't on tail. It wasn't right. And Devonta never makes it into the film. Making Maverick, who's played by Anthony Mackie, the non-OG, and King, who stars father, making their relationship or beef a thing that's just kind of like a thing that goes nowhere, doesn't have any root to it. And then we have Common. I mean, has he ever even played in a good movie? Like, is he actually a good actor? I mean, he's just a sanitized version of Uncle Carlos, who originally was meant to show the duplicity of being a black cop who came from the hood and still stands for his people. Instead, we're just left with a stereotypical black cop without a real storyline. Blue lives and respectability politics matter, I guess. Like, but that wasn't, that's not what the book was about. <sighs> The movie just doesn't connect in any of the ways the book does. And there are so many storylines that could have been extrapolated from the book to elevate the film and give it the nuance it deserves and really tell a story that pushes the message. Now, it doesn't feel good to criticize a movie that centers the Black Lives Matter movement. But when seeing things that are important to me finally get the mainstream they deserve, I don't wanna see a half-cooked frozen dinner taking up that space, you know? I want black excellence, not Pisces offering. We're allowed to critique. We're allowed to have this conversation. With all that said, I still think The Hate You Give is worth seeing, especially if you have kids and teenagers. I'm not mad at all that some people, especially those who have never read the book, like it or enjoy it. I actually think maybe teenagers will probably enjoy the movie, but I am disappointed that such a great opportunity to build upon a beautiful body of work that already laid a strong foundation. It's kind of lost in the sauce. Didn't do nothing. Such a waste.